More than one third of Nova Scotia is farmland. Normal rainfall and temperatures, plus good farm management, can provide luxuriant and nutritious crops, the food on which our lives depend. Good crops mean healthy livestock. And healthy people, because these crops contain the substances necessary for normal growth. Milk is a good example. The calcium and phosphorus it contains build healthy bones and teeth. But instead, we often find poor livestock eking out an existence on rundown soils like this. The change is gradual. Rich cultivated fields come slowly into weeds, daisies, and brown top. And then the forest slowly but surely encroaches on the once productive land, all because of poor farm management. Here's how it happens. Plants are nourished by food elements in the topsoil. The excess water passes through the topsoil and carries with it lime and fine soil particles containing calcium and magnesium. This action, called leaching, causes soils to become sour or acid. Sheet erosion, or surface runoff, removes a thin layer from the topsoil, literally washing away lime and plant foods. At the same time, the plants themselves absorb large quantities of calcium, magnesium, and other food elements. So that farm soils not well managed will in time become sour and unable to produce at all. Back in 1818, Agricola began writing about the sour soils in Nova Scotia and the need of lime to sweeten them. And Dr. L. C. Harlow, former chemist of the Nova Scotia Department of Agriculture, recalls the experimental tests he made with ground limestone in 1909. For instance, the field in the foreground was treated with lime, but the weedy patch in the background received no lime treatment. This whole field was treated with the same kind and amount of fertilizer but limestone was applied on the section to the left, and there only the growth is luxuriant. Where lime is used, grasses grow vigorously. Sorrel and other weeds that grow on acid soil disappear, and healthy grasses, clover and other leguminous plants, grow in great profusion on these sweet, lime-rich soils. For several years now, Agricultural workers in Nova Scotia have been cooperating with farmers in their soil management problems. A farmer and an agricultural worker go together to a field where the farmer wishes to know the amount of lime and fertilizer he will need in his following year's program. He takes several samples from different portions of each field so that the results will represent a true picture of the soil. He takes the sample at a depth of five to six inches. And removes the large stones, thoroughly mixes the samples on a clean canvas and transfers a portion of it to a special wax lined box. On the label, he records the number of the field and the farmer's name and address and forwards it to the department at Truro for analysis. Chemists cannot analyze samples that come in cans that may or may not be clean. But properly submitted samples are handled with great care by the chemist. Who thoroughly mixes the soil and places portions of it in a mortar. After breaking up the material, he transfers it to a set of sieves so that he can remove fibrous materials such as roots. Then he transfers the fine soil to the sample box, which goes to the laboratory for analysis.
Here, a chemist weighs a portion of the sample, transfers it to a porcelain crucible, and places it in a hot furnace to burn off the organic matter. After burning, he weighs the material again. The loss in weight gives an indication of the organic matter in the soil. He treats another portion of the sample with water and places it in a delicate instrument called a pH meter, which determines the degree of soil sourness or acidity. The meter reading here is 5.2, which indicates soil to be very sour. To still another portion of the sample, he adds an extracting solution. This mixture is shaken thoroughly to dissolve out all the available plant food. He then transfers the material to a filter paper. The soil particles remain in the paper, and the clean colored liquid that filters through contains all the food elements available in the soil. These liquid soil samples are treated with concentrated acid and other chemicals to convert the nitrogen into a form which can be distilled, and then the total nitrogen is determined in the red distillate. To test for magnesium, the chemist places another sample of liquid elements on spot plates. To this, he adds an acid. The solutions change color, and according to the chart, the intensity of color indicates the amount of magnesium present. Similarly, he tests for aluminum, a mineral toxic to plants, for available phosphate, for potash, for calcium, one of the most important ingredients contained in limestone. Then the chemist forwards the results of his analysis with recommendations to the farmers. In this particular case, the farmer received recommendations for liming, fertilizing, manuring, and other soil management practices applying to his farm. And attended an informal follow-up meeting held in his community. At such meetings, difficult questions and problems can be discussed. As a group, they decide how much lime and fertilizer they will need in their community so that they can organize and buy it cooperatively at a substantial saving. Lime may be applied in many ways, but more often in Nova Scotia, up-to-date mechanical equipment is used. The main function of lime is to build up the soil, making it easier for plants to assimilate the food in the soil. Dolomitic limestone contains the plant food elements calcium and magnesium. It promotes early growth and fosters the development of legumes, which have the ability to take free nitrogen from the air and store it in the plant tissues in the form of proteins. Thus, legume hay and pastures are profitable crops for use in livestock production. The value of feeding cattle on limed pastures was proved in the creameries. They discovered a large increase in the production of butter fat. Fifteen years ago, this creamery produced about 500,000 pounds of butter. Today, the same creamery produces in the vicinity of a million pounds of butter, with no apparent increase in the dairy cattle population in this area. The explanation is that cows in this particular area were better fed from the high quality feed produced on well-conditioned limed fields. No wonder this poor cow is not producing much butter fat. She feeds all day on this rundown pasture and is still hungry for the food she needs. Soil cannot produce without food either. This is apparent in this field on the left where no lime was applied. And this hay field is very skimpy and full of weeds. But lime was applied in this field, and it gives not only an increase in the yield, but an increase in protein, fat, minerals, and vitamins. It is the same with sweet clover for silage.
rye, oats, barley, and other grain. In fact, the use of lime puts money in the farmer's pocket. The use of limestone in Nova Scotia had increased from 3,300 tons in 1931 to more than 78,000 tons in 1949. But to replace the lime taken out and to maintain the soil at the desired level of efficiency, 200,000 tons of lime should be used each year on Nova Scotia soils. There are many lime quarries in Nova Scotia, but the largest one in operation is at Upper Muscadabit. Drilling into this 68-foot bluff of high-quality dolomitic limestone, they blast it out at the rate of 10,000 tons a month. They load it on trucks and carry it from the quarry. And it's brought to an up-to-date mill nearby. Driving up the ramp, the trucks empty their loads into a large hopper at the crusher. Sometimes the broken limestone from this quarry takes on a reddish tinge due to the presence of traces of iron. Heavy chains rolling over large drums feed the rocks from the hopper into a large jaw crusher, which reduces them to pieces four inches or smaller. The crushed rock then moves up a conveyor belt into the fine grinding end of the mill. And by successive treatments, lands at the top floor in powdered form. Now it passes through an ingenious automatic weighing machine called a weightometer, which records the exact tonnage going into any car that's being loaded. So in Nova Scotia, limestone is made available to farmers at a rate cheaper than anywhere in Canada. Lime is loaded in bulk on trucks for delivery direct to farms, or shipped in carload lots by rail, a good way to buy if lime will not be exposed to rain before spreading. But bagged lime is more satisfactory if storage is necessary, but the cost is somewhat higher. The use of lime has increased to such an extent that cooperatives, commercial and private firms handling dairy products, now act as distributors in their communities. An experiment in the delivery and spreading of limestone is now underway. After estimating the amount of limestone required, this community brings it in by carload lots. Trucks convey it direct to the fields and spread it by mechanical means. This is an end gate type of spreader. It spreads a path of lime about equal to the width of the truck. This is a whirligig type of spreader. They shove a lime from the truck to the spreader, which covers a wider area. The whirligig type is effective in orchards, where trees make other methods difficult. Then there is the hopper type truck spreader, which is newer. Owned either privately or cooperatively, it is used in many areas in Nova Scotia on a custom basis. It can be used on firm and frozen ground, it can spread a band of limestone up to 24 feet wide. And it can be used in windy weather because of the rubber skirts that are then lowered over the distributors. But leaving bags of lime on the ground like this is bad practice because the lime becomes damp and hard to spread. And in addition, lifting 100-pound bags is heavy work. Any season of the year can be lime spreading time. But fall spreading gives the lime time to sink into the soil and neutralize it for the spring crop. And winter, usually the quietest time the farmer has, is an excellent time to spread limestone. It's easy to get on the frozen ground. and When spread, the lime attracts sunlight and burns down through the snow to the soil beneath. But regardless of season, liming should have an important place in soil management. All plants benefit, including potatoes. 
but lime should not be added to a potato field immediately before planting the crop. Instead, it should be applied in a previous rotation to grow more luxuriant grasses and thus maintain the level of organic matter in the soil. So lime-rich soil results in the growth of high-quality grass and clover, hay, high in yield and quality. Neutralized soil means good grain crops. And highly colored apples. Better and greater yields of field crops, such as cabbages and other vegetables. Lime makes the soil richer in the essential food elements so that we have nutritious food, healthy livestock, and prosperous farms. Nova Scotia farmers cannot afford to farm without lime.